What's up? Yeah. For real. For real. For real. For real. For real. For real. That's all. Anybody who try to sabotage us. I want. I want. Gonna go down. Gonna go down, man. Kick him off. For sure. For sure. For sure. That's for real. That's for real, bro. That's for real, bro. That's for real, bro. That's for real, bro. Yeah, my brothers, we need Biafra. We don't just want Biafra. We need Biafra because our lives depend on it. Yes. And that is exactly the feeling of my people across the world about Biafra. We need Biafra. That is the truth. Undisputed fact. But there is something missing. And that is what I want to clear here. The difference between freedom of Biafra and Biafra independence. There are two different things. Freedom of Biafra and independence of Biafra. Two different things. And my people have mixed these two up. And that is why on this platform we have tried many times to clear this. It remained elusive. But before I continue, I want you to listen to the person that you will always love to listen to. His position about these two things, independence of Biafra and the freedom of Biafra. Then I'll be right back. Listen to Nam Kanu. I have said it before that I have no intention of seeking Biafra by peaceful means. No intention at all. We must go to war to get Biafra. We are fighting for independence, not fighting physically with guns and, and bullets. We are fighting in terms of our agitation. We are fighting in terms of our belief. We are fighting in terms of our consistency to ensure that we are free. Because we are not free. As a free people, we can afford to make life better for our people. Right now, we can't do that because of how Nigeria is structured and because of the very flawed foundations upon which Nigeria is. There is something some people do not know. That freedom fighting and asking for your independence are not the same. I will repeat what I said. Freedom fighting is not the same as asking for independence. Independence can come or should come as a result of fighting for your freedom. But you can be independent without being free. If you understand this, then you're a freedom fighter. That freedom is different from independence. A freedom fighter has only one goal. The freedom of his or her people. Somebody fighting for independence. You can be fighting for devolution. You can fight for federation. You can fight for unitary system. Anything goes. Freedom is the foundation, the key. And once you're a freedom fighter... You only worship one God, not two. I will continue. We must teach our people to be disciplined freedom fighters. So you know what it means to be a freedom fighter. And not somebody chasing independence, drinking tea from one useless place to another. Ask them that drank tea. When they were fighting for independence of Nigeria, they said they were fighting for their freedom. They said no. Nam Daziki wasn't a freedom fighter. He was somebody pursuing independence. Even Awolowo is a nationalist. Can you compare that to Nelson Mandela? Fine. You had it, right? Good. Now, the previous or the last um, live broadcast we did, Biafra Discourse, where we talked about who should be in control of Biafra land. That question alone made it clear to me that many of Biafra agitators, many of Biafra enthusiasts do not understand the difference between these two. Freedom of Biafra and Biafra independence. Because some of them came up to say, no, this is not the right time to talk about who will be in the control of Biafra when Biafra comes. Some of them will say, no, it will not be the politician that will be in control of Biafra when Biafra comes. And even when I try to explain to them, it, we are not talking about when Biafra comes. We are already in Biafra. We are living in Biafran land. And we are Biafrans. We are talking about now. 
and not when Biafra gets their independence. We are talking about the freedom of Biafran people in Biafran land now and not when Biafra gets their independence. And this is what have been confusing a lot of people. This is where we've been mixing, mi mixing it up. Now, what is Biafra freedom and what is Biafra independence? Just according to Nam Dekano when he said that you can have independence but you don't have freedom. He made reference to Awolowo and Zeke, which is correct. Oh yes, it is correct. They went for independence. Nigeria never had freedom. Nigerians never had freedom from the colonial clutches because that is why and how Nigerians and the rest of Africa have continued to be neocolonized up to today. So you had independence, but never your freedom. Now I'm going to clear you what freedom is all about. And that is what this platform is committed to do. Remember anytime I come on this platform, I tell you, we are committed to four core values. Our vision, our mission is political freedom of my people, economic freedom of my people, social freedom of my people, and spiritual freedom. We talk about freedom, freedom, freedom of my people. We don't talk much about independence. Because it is when you have freedom, that is when you now have independence. When you have independence, you may not have freedom. So, many of my Biafran people have condemned this platform, have called me a lot of names for saying exactly this same thing they had in Namdekanu say. Maybe it's because it didn't come from Namdekanu per se. But I must tell you that we are not here to mean so. We are not here to emotionally um, uh, 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 massage you. No. We are not here to tell you what you want to hear. We want to clear the air and empower you with the right information. Because that is the biggest problem and obstacle for the freedom of Biafran people, which will lead to our Biafran independence ultimately. Now, let me hit the ground running. We are talking about today. Our land is being overrun. We are talking about today. Biafras in Nigeria cannot breathe. We are talking about today. Our politicians, the people that call themselves political leaders, have enslaved us, have mortgaged our future and our freedom. They have enslaved us politically, economically, socially, and even spiritually. I will use one, one instance to clear this. Politically, Biafran people that are in Nigeria today, because that is the truth, Biafran people are still in Nigeria today. They are being occupied by Nigerian state. That is the fact. You cannot hide away from it. Biafran people in Nigeria today, just like the rest of other Nigerians are entrapped in Nigeria today, they don't have freedom. The Odudu was, they don't have freedom. Even the Ariwas, they don't have freedom. My people have been at the front corner because the freedom of African race depends on the freedom of Biafra. Write it down somewhere. Because in Biafra, Africa died. Now let me very quick. My people are not allowed, they are not they are not being led or their, their affairs being piloted by those who take decisions that positively affect them. They are politically enslaved. No wonder all these governors and political class go somewhere in the north to place their loyalty before coming back here to assume political offices. We know it is very clear that governors, senators, legislators in the state assemblies, many of the political class in Igbo land today do not have their loyalty to their people. This Fulani herdsmen and the anti-open grazing bill is one clear evidence 
to show you that we are politically enslaved. The video I published last time, where a Fulani Meiti Allah chairman in Abia State claimed that he has power to grace anywhere without restriction in Abia State. He mentioned that he doesn't have power in other states in the East. Definitely because they have the leadership of Meiti Allah in different, different states in the Southeast. You've had the governor of Anambra State say that the leader or he has Meiti Allah in his cabinet. The same is spread across. That is not even the problem. The problem is that they have sold our future. That is why they cannot sign into law the anti-open grazing bill because that is the business interest of their masters. This is the freedom we seek on this platform so that Biafran people can take over political leadership in Biafran land. That is the simple truth. Biafran people, Biafran enthusiasts, Biafran agitators should come up, organize yourselves, get into politics. You don't need to play the Nigerian politics, you play the Biafran politics. The politics of equity, fairness, and justice. The politics that will ensure the loyalty, the political decisions in Biafran land to be loyal to the Biafran people and not to those from the north or from the west or from any other place. Because democracy is government of the people, by the people, for the people. How can the government of Igbo land be for those that are aliens, foreigners, people that came in? You call that one democracy? No, that one is democracy. That is just one when it comes to political freedom. We don't have political freedom here. Because that is why we have been crying. That is why we have been wailing. But we are the cause. Many of us are shied away from the issue of... They will say you are doing Nigerian politics. The same people that are saying you are talking about Nigerian politics is still using Nigerian currency. You cannot come to their shop and buy without giving them Naira. That is hypocrisy. I am not here to bend words. I'm here to tell you the real truth. We are politically enslaved until we free ourselves from these stooges that are ruling us, that are leading us to nowhere. Until then, we will just be going round circle. What of economic freedom? Our people are slavishly industrious. These are the words of Omo of Anyoma. No, no, they slavishly industrious. Slavishly industrious. Slavishly industrious. Slavishly industrious. May God forgive this for us. Makanonia Sina, Umbel Toto, Umbo Colombia. Where do you go to the world? 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 These are not my words, but that is the truth. Complete truth. Absolute truth. We are slavishly industrious. Tell an Imo man we are going to tighten the tax, lift the tax from 1,000 to 10,000 naira. He doesn't blink. He rather he doubles his effort. Leave him. For nothing, he doesn't blink. As long as you don't lock up his shop, he's ready to toil day and night and meet up. That is how our people have been slavishly industrious. And that is economic slavery. Go to the ports, you understand what I'm talking about. Import things from outside Nigeria, you understand what, is, what I'm talking about and how enslaved we are economically in Nigeria. And that is why we have been saying, let me tell you, if I am a governor, if you have like minds like I am, piloting the affairs of the Southeast, I tell you, you don't need our budget to develop and transform Igbo land and Biafran land in general, economically. You don't even need their statutory allocation. We have what it takes, everything, 
to develop here without a dime from Abuja. You are saying now people bring back your wealth home. Patronize medieval land or Biafran land goods. Our people will not do that. They prefer imported goods. How can you develop? How can you have economic freedom relatively? So many times I've advertised, no, without any payment. I told our people, go and buy eBay to battery. I don't even know who is eBay to, but that is what I'm using. They call it local, but that is the best I've ever used. But our people will prefer imported ones. That is how we have been economically enslaved. What about socially? The one they call federal character. That is what I explained in my previous video, that it is the direct northernization policies. A northerner first. In employment, a northerner first. In recruitment, a, 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 a northerner first. In admission into tertiary institution, a northerner first. Everything, a northerner first. That is what you see, you call federal character. And when I see people parading that same federal character, I say these guys, they don't, they don't, they, 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 they are thinking. This is Amadou Bellu's northernization policy transformed into federal character. What is federal character? The way Nigeria is structured, it is a fraud. It is a subjugation against the rest of Nigerians. And that is the truth. What about spiritually? That is not what I'm going to be hammering upon now. That's not what I'm going to be talking about now. The spiritual freedom of my people. You know that now. We've been talking about it. Africans as a whole, we have lost it spiritually. But that will be a story for another day. But I tell you, no matter what you worship, we must respect anybody's spiritual identity. That is a personal race. That's why I say it's a story for another day. Now, the rest of Nigerians, make you not know things say, nah, these Biafran people, when they cry too much, when they talk too much. These Biafran people, when they cry too much, not only will be the people where they suffer for this Nigeria. Let me tell you, the biggest sufferers where we get for Nigeria today, now the north, they are the white people. Because the political class are using the same fraud they called one Nigeria to subjugate their own people. The headquarter of poverty around the world is in Nigeria, but not in my, in my place. It is, it is in the north. Go and see the level of illiteracy. Go and see the level of poverty. Insecurity at its highest echelon. That is where you find it. They cannot breathe. Who are their subjugators? Their political class. Just like we have right here. This is what we talk. This is what we mean when we talk about freedom. And it is high time, not just Biafran people, but the entire Nigerians and Africa as a whole should understand the difference between independence and freedom. And that is the commitment of this platform. And we will remain consistent on it. Whether you understand it or not, we will continue speaking until here opens. Because that is where the freedom lies. Here. I believe I've said enough. But we are going to continue on this track. On our next program, Biafra Discourse, coming on Friday. Don't forget, I'll be live two times every week. Tuesday for Matters Arising and Friday for Biafra Discourse. 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't miss it. And tomorrow, being Monday, I'll be going on a live radio broadcast. And I've chosen one of the best radio stations will be Attaching the link of the radio station on this post where I'll be going live, where we'll be talking about good governance and security, which will be tied around the anti open grazing bill that must be signed into law. It is a must. We are beginning that live program to conscientize our people who may not 
be watching our YouTube production and our online activities, we need to take the message down to our people. And that is where I'll meet you guys. Share this video, share the link, let everybody sit up. We are going to put on our seatbelt and fight for the real freedom now. You see that anti-open grazing bill, it must be signed into law. We are not begging the, the, the politicians, the Nigerian politicians in our homeland, parading themselves as governors and polit political class. They must sign that bill into law because now we own this land. And now we go determine waiting. They are, they are not there for themselves. They are there for us. And on the next run, if our people can buy into our message, they will come out in mass, organize ourselves, and take over power. Because this is a game of numbers. And we have the number. Thank you for watching. Keep liking. Keep sharing. Keep your faith with us. Drop your comments. We'll continue on this track. Don't forget, on Friday, I have a date with you on this topic. Goodbye and stay safe.